Welcome back to my animal education series. Today we're doing another virtual interview, so without further ado, let's get right into the questions. First off, can you introduce yourself and tell us what organization you are with? Hafini, my name is Brent Tibbetts. I'm a biologist with the Guam Department of Agriculture, Division of Aquatic and Wildlife Resources, and I'd like to talk to you today about coconut crabs, and particularly coconut crabs on Guam. Today we're going to talk about the coconut crab, which is the largest land arthropod. How big can these crabs get exactly? Coconut crabs can get up to three feet across from leg tip to leg tip and can weigh up to nearly 15 pounds. Quite like the largest crustaceans, uh, largest terrestrial crustaceans in the world and one of the largest native land animals on a lot of Pacific Islands. Many people may not be familiar with the coconut crab. Where can you find these crabs out in the wild? Coconut crabs are found in tropical island habitats, primarily from East Africa in the west to Pitcairn Island in the east. So pretty much the entire Indo-Pacific region, coconut crabs can be found. Uh, in many places where coconut crabs and people are found on the same islands, coconut crab numbers are down. They're, they're a popular food item in many places across the world. So where human habitation happens, coconut, numbers, coconut crab numbers tend to go down. This is a really large crab. As you mentioned before, it is the largest land species of crab. And out in the wild, there are a lot of factors that contribute to a different animal's size. So what are some of the factors that contribute to the coconut crab's large size? Coconut crabs reflect a trend in animals found in islands, which is that of kind of gigantism. They get this unusually large. Uh, before humans settled on Guam, coconut crabs were the largest land predators on Guam. But, you know, uh, and with other islands, with other taxa, you see that this also happens with birds. Uh, this happens with uh, insects. This happens with uh, uh, other organisms, other reptiles that on islands, they get extremely large size, probably for a couple of reasons, a lack of competition for resources and uh, to outgrow their own kind. Sometimes they're at risk of predation or you know, loss of habitat from their own kind. So it's kind of a, an arms race to who can get bigger quicker. Many animals develop special adaptations for their niche, especially animals that are adapted to living on an island. What special adaptations do coconut crabs have for a terrestrial lifestyle? Uh, most crabs breed, breathe with gills and are required to live in or near the water and keep, in order to keep those gills wet. Instead of gills, coconut crabs use a primitive lung-like organ to breathe. This allows them to not be tied to an aquatic environment so much. They can move inland, far away from ocean and far away from other crabs. And so far away from competition for similar food and habitat that other crabs might be trying for. The common English name may be a bit of a clue, but besides coconuts, what is in the coconut crab's diet? Coconut crabs are omnivores. They certainly do eat coconuts, uh, one of the reasons for their common name. They consume a wide variety of plant and animal materials. On Guam, they do eat pandanus as well as coconut, and they eat other crabs and small animals. Uh, they are cannibalistic and will eat each other when they get the opportunity. Uh, in places where people have outdoor pets, Coconut crabs are frequent visitors to the pet dishes at night. If there's pet food left outside during the night, it'll a lot of times be gone or there will be crabs seen during the night coming up to feed out of the pet dishes. There are a lot of sources online saying that how the coconut crab gets to eat a coconut, but can you explain to us how a coconut crab actually accesses the coconut meat? Coconut crabs have developed a specialized method for opening coconuts. What they do is uh, it'll approach a coconut and they can husk it. Their claws are extremely strong. They can, they can tear into the husk of a coconut and tear the husk open. Uh, once they get down to the actual coconut itself inside the husk, they start prying at their three little dark spots look like eyes. They're called the eyes of a coconut. That, and this is a little bit softer area. And they'll start prying at the eyes until they can get to the coconut shell to the meat of the coconut itself. And then they'll just slowly tear it apart. Coconut crabs are actually related to hermit crabs, but the adult crabs don't use seashells or any other eyes for protection. Do younger coconut crabs use seashells for protection, or do their carapaces provide all the protection that they need? Coconut crabs are related to hermit crabs. Adult coconut crabs are large enough to not need the protection of a borrowed shell, unlike hermit crabs. Uh, when coconut crabs are young, though, when they first emerge from the ocean onto land, it's, they frequently do carry shells similar to other hermit crabs. 
Uh, and this is because they do need protection from other predators, including larges of their own kind, and they are not big enough yet to defend themselves, so they do take the additional shelter that um, borrowed mollusk shells do, do provide. I read that these crabs molt as they grow. Could you tell us a little bit about that process, and after a crab molts, is it more susceptible to predation? Adult coconut crabs have no natural predators on islands. Like I said, in Guam, historically, they were the largest before humans came. They were the largest predators on land. The greatest th threat to them currently are humans or other coconut crabs. Uh, when coconut crabs are young, they're at risk of predation from a large number of animals, uh, other, other crabs, uh, things like seabirds, lizards, um, uh, almost anything that will eat meat on an island will go after coconut crabs when they're small. Uh, eventually they outgrow all of these predators and pretty much their only risks then are other coconut crabs and human beings. Many species of crabs live in or near the water, but the little bit that I read about the coconut crabs states that they are mostly terrestrial. Do these crabs spend any time in the water? Coconut crabs live in the ocean when they're, when they're larvae. Once they come to land, they don't enter the ocean again. Uh, their gills begin to atrophy and then they lose the ability to breathe underwater and then they just had, as we mentioned earlier, this kind of uh, simple lung-like organ that allows them to breathe air. Uh, coconut crabs can use small puddles of standing water to drink and moisten themselves, but they don't ever enter water after they've, after, after they've gone to land. The closest to an exception to this is when a female coconut crab is ready to lay eggs, she will go down to the shoreline, uh, kind of stand where the waves are breaking or just barely in the water and kind of wave her abdomen to release the eggs into the water. She carries the eggs under the abdomen until they're ready to hatch. And then she goes down to the ocean and kind of waves it and releases the eggs and the hatching larvae out into the water where they spend uh, a bit of time before they come back to land and then they become just purely terrestrial after that. They generally will stay in the water for about four or five weeks as they go through several molts and grow and grow and grow until they, come, they become finally a similar in appearance to a miniature adult coconut crab. Then they come to land and they stay there for the rest of their lives. When do these crabs typically reach sexual maturity, and how long do they live in the wild? All right, coconut crabs reach sexual maturity at about five years of age, but they can live up to 50 years or even more probably. So even to be, in, to be old enough to reproduce takes about five years, but they can live long beyond that. Several sources state that the coconut crab is also called the robber crab. Why is that? Coconut crabs are sometimes called robber crabs, this stems from their uh, willingness to collect shiny objects and uh, you know steal things from campsites and things like that. Uh, the habit of stealing shiny objects can be used against them by hunters and is used against them by hunters. So hunters will put out uh, like aluminum cans with some bait attract, uh, attached or sometimes just aluminum cans. The coconut crabs will take them go to a hiding place and so what hunters will do though is they just come out around with a flashlight and look under rocks and places where coconut crabs might hide and if they see a shiny object in there they know the coconut crab is in there. Does the coconut crab have any cultural significance or myths in Guam? Uh, people of Guam believe in Tautamona, the, the spirits of the people who have gone before them. They believe sometimes that these spirits can affect their lives today, especially if they're out in the jungle or, or uh, you know, out away from home. Um, one myth on Guam is that Tautamona can manifest themselves as a coconut crab or can be in a coconut crab when they come to visit uh, their ancestors. So that, that some coconut crabs are kind of given almost like a supernatural spiritual presence as it's thought that the spirits of ancestors are uh, residing in a coconut crab. What is the current IUCN status of the coconut crab? The coconut crabs are listed as vulnerable by the U IUCN. What that means is that's, that's the lowest level of threat. That's, that's the, the least concern, but it is a sign of threat. And this is primarily because of predation by humans on many islands where they're found and sometimes uh, loss of habitat, clearing of jungle for uh, construction will also impact coconut crab populations. How are the coconut crab populations doing where you are now? Guam coconut crab numbers are pretty low compared to what, what they used to be. Talking to hunters that it's uh, harder than it used to be to catch coconut crabs. Uh, 
they, they generally are where the high, numbers are the highest are areas where there are limestone cliffs and native limestone forests. That's their preferred habitat. And that can be, like I said, many, you know, a couple miles inland from the ocean. That's where they prefer to spend their time. Uh, on Guam, coconut crab hunting is illegal on military bases. So you will find larger numbers on military land because there is no take allowed of those. Do you mind telling us about your work at the Division of Aquatics and Wildlife and what is being done to protect such a unique species? DAR, the, the Division of Aquatic and Wildlife Resources, is the section of government of Guam I work for. That's the agency tasked with managing Guam's natural resources. As such, we're responsible for enforcing regulations designed to protect coconut crabs. On Guam, coconut crabs must be more than three inches across the back. Uh, to collect for personal use and more than four inches across the back to collect for commercial use. Uh, there's no take of females allowed and especially no take of females carrying eggs and they can be tell you can tell the genders females have a group of extra it looks like little legs on the abdomen that's what they use to carry the eggs when they're getting ready to take them to the ocean to, to release them. Males don't have those. So if you catch a coconut crab and it's got these little legs on the abdomen that's a female she needs to be let go. Males can be kept. Uh, and there's a limit of 10 coconut crabs per day per person and 50 crabs per year. You're not allowed, to, not allowed to take more than 50 crabs per year. Thank you so much for helping me put together this amazing virtual video. As I mentioned before, I really like doing these videos and having people like you put, help me put them together really means a lot to me and a lot to my audience as well as I think to learn about animals from all across the world. But again, thank you so much for that and for answering all my questions and sharing video. And thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and as always, I will see you next week.